Hi everyone, in this video we will study guidelines related to ICD 10 CM Chapter 1. This video will be part 2. To check the video related to part 1, click the link above and the link will also be mentioned in the description. Let's start. Let us start with infectious agents as the cause of disease classified to other chapters. Certain infections are classified in chapters other than chapter 1 and no organism is identified as part of the infection code. In such cases, it is necessary to use the additional code from chapter 1 that is to identify the organism. So, we have to use a code to identify the organism which causes infection. A code from category B95 that is Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Enterococcus and B96 that is other bacterial agent or B97 that is for viral agents. So these codes should be used as an additional code to identify the organism. Whenever you check an infection code, you will find an instructional note indicating that additional organism code is required. So we have to code to identify the organism which causes infection. Next is Infections resistant to antibiotics. Many bacterial infections are resistant to current antibiotics. So, it is necessary to identify all infections documented as antibiotic resistant. We have to assign a code from category Z60 resistance to antimicrobial drugs following the infection code. Only if the infection code does not identify drug resistance. So, first we have to code the type of infection and second code will be Z16 that is resistance to antimicrobial drugs. Next important guideline in chapter 1 is sepsis, severe sepsis and septic shock infections resistant to antibiotics. So what is sepsis? Sepsis is a serious condition in which the body responds improperly to an infection. The sepsis code series is A41. So, if sepsis is mentioned, we have to use the code from series A41 and we have to code the specific organism if mentioned. If the type of infection or casual organism is not further specified, then we have to use the code A41.9 that is sepsis unspecified organism. And also they have mentioned negative or inconclusive blood cultures do not preclude a diagnosis of sepsis in patients with clinical evidence of the condition. However, the provider should be queried. Now let us discuss severe sepsis. So the code for severe sepsis is R65.2. So if they have mentioned sepsis with related acute organ dysfunction, then we have to code severe sepsis that is R65.2. So here there are two conditions that is first one sepsis with associated organ dysfunction. If the acute organ dysfunction is related to sepsis then we have to code as follows. The first code will be A41. Second code will be the severe sepsis code that is R65.2 and the third code will be any associated organ dysfunction if present. Second condition is acute organ dysfunction which is not related to sepsis. So, in this case we should not code R65.2. Next is septic shock. So, septic shock generally refers to circulatory failure associated with severe sepsis. Therefore, it represents a type of acute organ dysfunction. So, for cases of septic shock, the code for systemic infection should be sequenced first, followed by the code R65.21, severe sepsis with septic shock or code T81.12, post-procedural septic shock. Any additional codes for other acute organ dysfunction should also be assigned. Remember that the code for septic shock should never be assigned as a principal diagnosis. So, how will you sequence the code for septic shock? First, we have to use the code A41 that is for sepsis. Second code will be R65.21 that is for severe sepsis with septic shock. And the third code must be associated organ dysfunction. Next is sepsis or severe sepsis with localized infection. So, if the reason for admission is sepsis, 
or severe sepsis and a localized infection such as pneumonia or cellulitis a code for the underlying systemic infection should be assigned first and the code for localized infection should be assigned as secondary diagnosis if the patient has severe sepsis a code from sub category r65.2 should also be assigned as a secondary diagnosis and if the patient is admitted with localized infection such as pneumonia and severe sepsis doesn't develop until after admission the localized infection should be assigned first followed by the appropriate sepsis or severe sepsis codes so to simplify this paragraph first if the reason for admission is sepsis then the first code should be 41 that is for sepsis okay and the second code will be for localized infection second condition if the reason for admission is severe sepsis then the first code will be sepsis that is 41 series and the second code will be for localized infection and the third code will be r65.2 and third condition if the reason for admission is localized infection then we have to code the localized infection first next is sepsis due to post procedural infection so in this case the first code should be t81.4 to t81.43 infection following a procedure or a code from o86.00 to o86.03 that is infection of obstetric surgical wound so it should be sequenced first and the additional code for sepsis following a procedure t81.44 should be assigned as the second code and the third code should be the infectious agent and the fourth code will be r65.2 if severe sepsis is mentioned and we have to also code for acute organ dysfunction if it is present next is sepsis and severe sepsis associated with non infectious process condition so in this case the first code should be of the non infectious condition second code should be sepsis third code must be severe sepsis r65.2 if it is present and the fourth code will be any associated organ dysfunction next is hemolytic uremic syndrome associated with sepsis so if the reason for admission is hemolytic uremic syndrome that is associated with sepsis okay then we have to code d59.31 as the principal diagnosis and codes for any underlying systemic infection should be assigned as secondary diagnosis next is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus mrsa conditions so let us see the selection and sequencing of mrsa codes first is combination codes for mrsa infection when a patient is diagnosed with an infection that is due to mrsa and the infection has a combination code that includes the casual organism then we have to assign the appropriate combination code second is other codes for mrsa infection so when there is documentation of a current infection that is for example wound infection stitch abscess urinary tract infection due to mrsa and the infection does not have a combination code that includes casual organism then we have to assign the appropriate code to identify condition along with the code b95.62 that is mrsa infection as the cause of disease classified elsewhere next is MSSA that is methicillin susceptible staphylococcus aureus and MRSA colonization so what is colonization it means that the MSSA or MRSA is present on or in the body without necessarily causing illness so a positive MRSA colonization test might be documented by the provider as MRSA screen positive okay so these are the terms when it is documented by the provider that is screen positive or mrsa nasal swab positive so the mrsa colonization code is z22.322 and mssa colonization code is z22.321 next if a patient is documented as having both mrsa colonization and infection during hospital admission we have to use the code z22.3 to that is carrier or suspected carrier of mrsa and code for mrsa infection both may be assigned 
Next is Zika virus infection. So, we have to code only confirmed cases. A92.5 is the code for Zika virus disease. Remember, we have to code only confirmed diagnosis. If the provider documents terms such as suspected, possible, probable Zika, then do not code A92.5. In such case, we have to assign a code explaining the reason for encounter. Next important guideline is for coronavirus infections. So, first guideline code only confirm cases. So, we have to code always confirm condition. So, the code for confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19 is U07.1. And remember, if in the documentation it is mentioned suspect, probable or possible, then we should not code U07.1. We have to use the code U07.1 only if the COVID-19 is confirmed. Next is sequencing of COVID-19 codes. So, U07.1 will be the primary code whenever the patient is coming with any COVID-related conditions. You can see here COVID-19 meets the definition of principal diagnosis code U07.1 COVID-19 should be sequenced first followed by appropriate codes for associated manifestation. Next is acute respiratory manifestations of COVID-19. So, whenever the reason for encounter or admission is respiratory manifestation of COVID-19, then remember always we have to assign the code COVID-19 U07.1 as the principal diagnosis. And we have to assign code for respiratory manifestation as additional diagnosis. So, what are the common respiratory manifestations of COVID-19? The first one is pneumonia. For a patient with pneumonia confirmed due to COVID. So, if the pneumonia is confirmed that it is due to COVID, then we have to assign the code U07.1 that is for COVID-19 and J12.82 that is for pneumonia due to coronavirus disease. Second common respiratory manifestation of COVID-19 is acute bronchitis. So, if a patient with acute bronchitis confirmed as due to COVID-19, then we have to use the code U07.1 as the first code and G20.8 that is acute bronchitis due to other specified organism. Next is lower respiratory infection. If the COVID-19 is documented as being associated with lower respiratory infection not otherwise specified or an acute respiratory infection not otherwise specified, we have to use the code U07.1 and J22 that is unspecified acute lower respiratory infection. Next is acute respiratory distress syndrome. For acute respiratory distress syndrome that is ARDS remember the abbreviation. So if it is due to COVID-19 then we have to use the code U07.1 as the first code and J80 that is for acute respiratory distress syndrome as the second code. Next is acute respiratory failure. So, if the acute respiratory failure is due to COVID-19, then we have to assign U07.1 as the principal diagnosis and J96.0 for acute respiratory failure. So, remember that U07.1 will be primary code whenever the patient is coming with any COVID-related illness. Next is non-respiratory manifestation of COVID-19. Whenever reason for encounter is non-respiratory manifestation of COVID-19, we have to assign code U07.1 COVID-19 as the first diagnosis and we have to use the add-on code that is for manifestation. Next is exposure to COVID-19. So, the code for exposure of COVID is Z20.822. Next is screening for COVID-19. For screening of COVID-19, we have to assign the code Z11.52 encounter for screening for COVID-19. Next is signs and symptoms without definitive diagnosis of COVID-19. For patients presenting signs symptoms associated with COVID-19 but definitive diagnosis has not been made, then we have to assign the code for signs and symptoms. Next important code is for personal history of COVID-19 that is Z86.16. Next Follow-up visits after COVID-19 infection has been resolved. For individuals who had COVID-19 without residual symptoms or condition, it means that the individuals who previously had COVID-19 but the infection has been resolved and now there are no symptoms and they are being seen for follow-up evaluation 
and COVID-19 test results are negative, then we have to assign the code Z09. That is encounter for follow-up examination after completed treatment. And we have to use the code for personal history of COVID-19 Z86.16 because the patient had COVID-19 and now it is resolved. So it is a history of COVID-19, right? So we have to use the second code Z86.16. First code will be follow-up visit after resolved COVID Z09. Next is encounter for antibody testing. For an encounter for antibody testing that is not being performed to confirm a current COVID-19 infection and nor it is a follow-up test after resolution of COVID-19, we have to assign the code Z01.84 that is encounter for antibody testing. Next is multi-system inflammatory syndrome. So, for individuals who have multi-system inflammatory syndrome and COVID-19, first code should be COVID-19 and second code should be multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Next is post-COVID-19 condition. So, for sequela of COVID-19 or associated symptoms or condition that develop following a previous COVID-19, we have to assign a code for specific symptom or condition related to previous COVID-19 infection if known and code U09.9 post COVID-19 condition unspecified. So if there is any sequela due to COVID, we have to use the code U09.9. Next is under immunization for COVID-19 status. That is we have to use the code Z28.310 for unvaccinated for COVID-19. So it is used when the patient has not received COVID-19 vaccine and we have to use the code Z28.311 if the patient is partially vaccinated. So in this video we studied guidelines related to ICD chapter 1. Don't forget to show your support to my channel by liking, sharing and subscribing to CodeMed Mastery. And stay tuned for more information related to medical coding and CPC examination.